Scoring in golf may seem like you have to make birdies and go low like the PGA Tour pros. Scoring in amateur golf is all about removing the big numbers. And I'm going to show you how to do that with these 25 immutable laws of scoring. The first law of scoring is that you want to play the hole back from the green. What do you want into the green? If you cannot plan the club that you want into the green from the tee, your next best bet is to hit the longest possible shot off the tee that will stay in play, allowing a second shot no hazards, no lost balls. I'm hitting a mini driver here. It's about 390 yards long. The mini driver goes 240 to 250, leaving me a nice 140 yard shot up the hill. Knowing your distances with every club is absolutely essential. If you can't do that, you can't do anything in this video because you need to know the distance to be able to plan and plot your way around a golf course. Once we know our distances, we can plan our approaches, we can plan our tee shots, and we can get the ball to a position near the green to allow up and downs. Now, this is a law that you're gonna be able to take with you on every single shot, hit the nine time out of 10 shot. The shot you can pull off nine times out of 10, not the one out of 10 time from the summer of 03, not the 50-50 shot, the nine out of 10 shot. Whatever is gonna be nine out of 10 for you, take that shot. That's gonna save you so much grief on the golf course. That's a little bit firm, but we're gonna take it easy game. This is not necessarily a law for scoring, but always remember it ain't over until the body positive, big bone plus size lady sings. Go, oh. go. Oh. You're not gonna be perfect in golf. No matter how much you try, golf is a journey, not a destination. Now the pursuit of that perfection is fine, but we need a plan to get there. And this is the law of planning in golf. You have a plan for your hole, a plan for your shot. It's not always gonna come off the way you want it to, but a plan gives you feedback. No plan, no feedback. You have a plan, you discover whether it's good or bad. You discover how you hit the ball, how you set up your shots. Was it correct? Could you have chosen something different? That's how we use the plan to get feedback. Here my plan is to hit a nine wood up on the right because it won't reach big trouble. Dispersion right and left offline is not so big compared to a driver. And we don't have enough space up there to hit a driver confidentially with water on the left and kind of like an OB on the right. That's all we need, ball in play. The law of commitment says we have to commit to the shot 101% minimum. 99% is not enough. It has to be fully committed to every shot. Part of that is picking the shot you can do nine times out of 10. And now we have to find which shot we can hit nine times out of 10 to a free throw distance. So the law of free throw distances means we hit the ball to a distance we prefer. Do I want to have a 60, 70 yard shot in here? I don't, I really don't like them. Give me something inside 50 yards, no problem. Give me something 90 yards plus, I'm okay. So we can use our surroundings. We have a 150 yard marker on the right and further left, a 100 yard marker. So the 100 yard marker is 156 yards away, minus 15, 140 maximum. I want to leave myself about 100 yards into the hole here with a beautiful sand wedge because the greens are firm here. So we're hitting a 48 degree up toward the 100 yard marker. And from there, hopefully we leave ourselves around 100 in. And this is a shot I can hit 10 times out of 10, not even nine times. Money, absolutely money. Look at the silly Billy. There's the 100 yard. We went directly at it on the line and we stopped 15 yards, 10 yards short of it. We're still in the fairway money. The law of the fat side means we want to hit the ball toward the fat side of the green, not the short side. The short side is the side that the pin is cut closest to. So if the pin's all the way on the right, the short side is the right hand side. The fat side is the left hand side. If you hit toward the fat side, when you miss you have an easier chip and when you land on the green you're going to have a longer putt but you're going to have more putts rather than missing on the short side and having the most impossible up and downs. When it comes to your free throw distances, it's completely up to you. When you see that distance, you see that club in hand, you see it behind the ball, you feel it, you feel it. Okay, we're gonna go just at the pin and this is gonna should move a little bit to the left and that means we're gonna be on the safe side. Beautiful. A lot of stats boys will tell you green regulation is the key to scoring and you need to hit more greens. And I agree, you need to hit more greens for sure. But just keep in mind that a scratch hits 10, a five hits eight greens, a 10 handicap hits six greens, 15 handicap hits five greens, 20 handicap hits four greens. Now between a 10 and a 20 handicap is 10 shots, two more greens in regulation. 
That's not jiving, the math's not jiving. So forget about greening regulation for a while. Around the greening regulation is absolutely money, especially if you can putt it. When people tell you hit more greens, that's the key to scoring, no one tells you how. And we're gonna talk about position, position, position. Just like we set up all those positions intentionally. It's okay, it's okay. We, we don't wanna go past the hole, because then we deados. The law of the go-to club tells us that if our main primary tee club doesn't work on the day, we need something to fall back onto to get the ball into play. That's a go-to club. You need go-to clubs because if you can't get into play, you can't play golf. If you're going OB, topping, shanking, hooking, you're gonna have big problems. So find yourself one or two go-to clubs. Could be a fairway wood and a hybrid, a fairway wood and then an iron, but get something that's confidentiality bringing. I'm gonna hit my normal driver, which I haven't been playing. I've been playing the mini driver lately. So that's my normal shot. Requires very little. So it's much easier to just get it straight down the fairway with my go-to club when the main one's off. The law of the lie of the ball tells us that the ball's lie is the most important part of the shot selection and club selection. I'm now in a mixture of grass in the rough. I'm definitely going to get grass between the ball and the club face. And that means it's going to reduce spin, meaning that the ball can either be short because I didn't catch all of it, or I catch it good and it flies. So that's going to increase our distance range that we hit the ball. So if I hit a 9-9, nine -nine, let's say 160 normally, that could go 175, 180, or it could go 130. So we have to always interpret the lie everywhere on the golf course as the first thing we look at. The law that extends off of the law of the lie is the law of trajectory. Which way is our ball gonna fly, both in the shape, left and right, and how high is it gonna come out? Then you can select your club. So the shape plus the height plus the lie. These are the things that shape what shot you take. I don't have much into the hole here, That's why the bylaw of stay in the fairway is so important. Look how short I am because of that crappy lie. If I hit that shot from the fairway, we're next to the pin. Immutable law around the greens, G-I-O-T-G, Giotige. It's an Italian word meaning get it on the green. It's a very simple phrase, but a lot of people forget it, getting greedy and not getting the ball on the green, double chipping. Double chipping is a big waste of shots. Remember, get it on the green. And the bylaw of that, the easiest way, a lot of the time, is toe down chipping. So you hit it off the toe of the club with a putting grip and let it roll out. Get it to land just on the front, let it roll all the way to the hole. Move my hands up, hold it like a putt, use my putting grip with my hands and use a putting stroke. Try land it on, just on the green, maybe a yard or two. And that's as good as we can do. It's a very tough green. There's a big dome in the middle. So either you go left of the dome and it veers off left, or you go right of the dome and it veers off right. Very difficult shot. The law of low expectations in golf. This is a 10-footer. PGA Tour pros make 30% of these. Three out of 10, four out of 10 maximum. And they putt all the time practicing. If you can reduce your expectations and not try say to yourself, I need to make more putts from 10 feet. I need to make 50% of them to be able to score better. No, no. So we reduce our expectations. We're gonna miss seven out of 10 of these at least. And then the law of low expectation for the rest of the round, we make the plan that we can. We take the nine out of 10 shots that we can. If they don't work out, some days you're gonna play good, some days you're gonna play bad. But we get feedback on every shot. Come on, man. What a good putter. So into the breeze, 188. I don't have my beautiful six iron with me. I've got a very limited selection of clubs, trying to see how few clubs you need to shoot around level par. I'm gonna hit my nine wood into the breeze. The breeze should hold it up, normally a 200 yard club. It should finish middle of the green or even short if I don't catch all of it, leaving a very simple chip. We don't wanna go right, we don't wanna go long, short and short left, perfect. We've wildly missed that, but we have missed on the fat side. The law of missing in the correct area means to miss on the fat side to give you the best chance at up and down. If we go in that bunker, no good. If we go in the bunker there, no good. And long, we're hitting onto a down slope. So here, we have a good chance of an up and down, or better than most. 
So all we have to do is get it on the green. That's just going to break down to the hole because we gave ourselves all the space to hit that shot rather than trying to get greedy from the short side, avoid the short side where the pin is cut closest, which would be on the right side, to give yourself better chance of up and downs. So we're hitting mini driver here because a big driver we're scared of going with a slice and putting it out of, out of bounds. Even with a 300 yard perfect drive down the middle, we still have 280 into the hole. We're not going to be making it all the way there. So let's just get this ball in play as long as we can without losing the ball. Beautiful. The law of mechanics away from the course means we can only work on mechanics away. Not when you come to play a round of golf, only if you're doing practice round. If you're playing a scoring round, you cannot have a single mechanic in your mind. It's taking away your concentration towards your target and your free flowing swing. If you are trying to find YouTube swing mechanic advice, you are going down a very deep dark hole I would highly suggest you avoid. See a coach, work on it away from the course, come to the course and clear your mind. Slowly those mechanics you're working with your coach will come into your swing via osmosis. Slowly but surely, a year from now you won't recognize yourself. But on the course, they're out of your mind. From here, I don't really care much about how far I've into the hole. I'm not hitting a 260 yard shot. I'm not taking out my seven wood and pummeling it down there for absolutely no reason. It's got the highest dispersion compared to my mid irons or wedges. I'm gonna use my surroundings and shoot to the 100 yard marker. We hit the seven iron just to the left of the 100 yard marker. Give it a nice wallop. And we're absolutely money up there. Got a beautiful wedge into the green. We have 107 yards here to the hole. That's about the middle of the green. The back of the green is about 112, 115, and then the front of the green is about 90. To select a club using the law of approach shots, a great strike reaches the back edge, a decent strike, normal strike reaches the middle, and a poor strike hits the front edge. That's how we choose clubs as amateurs. We don't go for pinpoint accuracy, we go for highest probability, Lip out, lip out, lip out, lip out. Come on. Come on. The law of the game inside five feet tells us we can get the short game of a PGA Tour Pro inside five feet very easily with some practice. You want to make all of your putts from two and three feet, 90% from four feet, and 80% from five feet. This is the area that your ball is gonna finish the most after bunker shots, chip shots, and your first putts. If you have high confidentiality inside five feet, you're gonna score better, I guarantee it. Now I'm not gonna poo poo distance and say it's not important, no, 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 distance is very important. This is a 450 yard hole. How are you gonna play this hole for par if you're not hitting at 250? The thing is though, if you're not gonna able to make par on this 450 yard hole, you're playing the wrong tees. So while distance is very important to play further back, you can always take solace in the fact that there are multiple tee options at most golf courses. So increase your distance with better strike, better technique, of course, and then you can move back in the tees. And we're going to hit the driver here because it shapes left to right and the hole shapes left to right. So if I go at the white marker down in the corner over this bush on the tee in front of me, that's a money line. I'm setting up with the law of aiming for your shot shape at that white marker to fade to my target landing area. We don't hit phantom tee shots. We do not hit suddenly a draw when we are a fade of the golf ball. We don't hit a dead straight when we hit a fade on the day. Accept your shot shape on the day and aim for it. So I'm gonna aim for this fader. Remember the law of par is a social construct. This is a 450 yard hole. If you are forced to play this, are you seeing it as a par four? Make your own par. This is probably a very low index. Make it a par five. Hell, if it's really difficult, make it a par six. And just take the pressure off your game to force yourself to hit stupid shots to try reach it in two when you really can't. An important caveat here, when we're talking about hitting more greens, hitting the ball further. When you become an elite golfer, you look at something by Steve Forsett, the decade system, he advises for his decision tree on the tee for an elite golfer who hits at about 290 to 300, that he needs to have 65 yards of space between penalizable hazards if you want to hit the driver. If you can't, you have to 
gear down. So the best case as an elite golfer, trying to hit it further, the best case you're going to have 65 yards of dispersion. Then an elite golfer, let's say a scratch golfer for us would be elite, are hitting 9 greens, 10 greens out of 18, meaning they're missing the other half. So at your very peak best, you're going to average 9 greens and you're going to have a 65 yard plus dispersion on your driver. That's not very good odds. So let's say you're a scratch golfer hitting 9, 10 greens around. What are you doing on the other 8 or 9 greens? You have to get up and down. The short game is by default the fallback position for everyone. How do you reduce your score when you're missing most of the greens? It comes down to the short game. So while we focus on hitting greens in regulation, the real focus should be on getting the ball in play to a place that's not penalized, get the ball up and around the green for easy chips. That's the way amateurs play golf because by default we miss most of the greens, meaning we are scramblers. If you're getting the ball in play reasonably and you're getting a second shot with no interruptions, no penalties, the only thing that's going to keep your score down is the short game. We've got 162 here into the breeze, so it's going to hold the ball up a little bit, but we're from the rough, so we may take some spin off, it's not going to hold. It's going to bound up the green. And the worst place is over the green, most difficult chip. So I'm going to hit the 9 from 160 into the breeze instead of a 7, because a 7 may go over, and we want to remember the law of missing in the correct area to give us the easiest chip. Gangbanger, you're going to look online and see so much FUD about freaking the short game. Yes, it's uh, definitely the easiest way to get low-hanging fruit, but it has a serious diminishing returns. The data has disproven. You can get some quick wins by working on the short game, but then you're going to have to focus on the distance. The data has disproven. Once you start hitting the ball better, once you go to lessons, of course you're going to score lower because you have less chips, less difficult chips. You put the pitches in their place. Welcome to the promised land. This is the duality of golf. Every course is easy and every course is difficult, depends where you put the ball. If I put this in the bunker, it's more difficult. I didn't. Come on. And that's a toe down seven iron. I'm gonna miss the green a lot of the time. You're gonna miss the green more than me even probably. And that's just how you save your score. Diminishing returns, kiss my little ass. Change, change, change. Change, change caddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the law of the putt inside five foot. As I told you, this is where your chips are going to start ending up. If you have confidentiality from here, you start saving your score very, very quickly, very easily. The law of confidentiality translates to your 15th club in the bag. Confidentiality changes the way you hit a shot compared to low confidentiality. High confidentiality shots creates comfort. Comfort and confidentiality create trust, which give you commitment. We talked about commitment earlier, 101% minimum. You get that commitment with confidential clubs and comfortable feeling. We have 148 playing 138 to the hole. With a breeze into us, we're gonna play the full 148. Let's do it, man. Shit. Come on now, partner. Because my caddy is not getting a tip unless we have hole in one. The confidentiality stops me from coming up, stops me from changing my spine angle, stops me from duffing, stops me from trying funny things at the top of my backswing. If you are thinking, don't screw this up at the top of your backswing, or oh shit, just pull out, do something different. If you can do that and walk away and take confidential shot, you're gonna bring your scores down. Now, there are some statistics that we like to quote are averages, right? So an average scratch golfer may three putt once a round, maybe once every two rounds. That's the average. That means there's a lot of people higher than that and a lot of people lower than that. So when you're shooting for like lower three putts, our goal is zero because there are scratch golfers out there making zero three putts, but there are some making two, so that average is one. And with putting, we have to pick a start line, just like on our full shots, we have to pick a start line and allow the shot shape, or on putts, the break, to go toward the hole. That's what I did with the seven iron. I picked an uh, aiming point left of the pin and pushed it toward the hole. Now I'm gonna pick an aiming point right of the hole to let the break come into the hole. I can't just look at the hole because I'll miss it on the left. So I'm gonna look at my break, I'm gonna see it, and I'm going to put this out a couple, maybe two, three holes outside the right. And hopefully the slope just brings it back. Caddy no good. <laughs> Why? The law of strength and weaknesses means we play to our strengths and avoid our weaknesses. The law also tells us we work on our weaknesses away from the golf course and we don't play into them. We play toward our strengths. The other thing you'll find about all these laws is they will very quickly expose what part of your game is deficient. Most of the time, it's short game.
people get triggered by seeing their short game being so bad that they just revert to their old style of play and they don't ever work on that little part of the game that's going to give them the most benefit. They're going for something sexy, something big, something distant, something big boy. When in actual fact, the little shots are going to impact your game much better. You're going to build confidence from the hole backwards. You take pressure off your lag putting and chipping when you can putt from short. When you can chip and lag putt, it takes pressure away from your irons to hit it close. When you don't have to hit your irons close and you know you can get up and down, your tee shots have less stress too. That is the law of strength and weaknesses, the law of working back from the hole in practice and in play. Now I'm going to hit a driver here because my strength here is I know what shot shape it's going to be. It's going to fade, the wind's going to push it right and we have a lot of space, big Texas on the right. But the bylaw of hitting into Texas means we hit away from danger all the times, away from danger as far as possible so that we can just have a clear shot without any, any chance of going in the hazard. So we set this one up straight down the center at the red marker, which I'll mark on the screen. And we know we're going to fetter absolutely money. I just absolutely wrecked that golf ball. Now you may have seen some field goal posts on every shot in this video. That's just to show you where you're aiming to hit the ball. You have to shape your shot to go between your field goal posts. If you can do that, you're going to get in positions you want to be all the time. That little area to land the ball is quite big for you, but your aiming point is small, so you get it in between there. That is the law of the field goal. Where are your field goal posts? Mine on this hole was anything beyond the, the water, extending from th that bunker all the way to that edge of the fairway, huge area, which is why I hit the driver, because I know if I catch it okay, it's going to clear the water, take it out of play. And then my landing area is so wide. So that's my big field goal area. Where are your field goal posts? Always remember that on your shot. Where are my field goal posts? Put them in the areas so that you can take advantage of the law of aiming in the correct place, missing in the correct place, and that's going to help your scores. So I'm going to have to take my 56 and try to, try to work out a shot here. I don't like this 85 yard shot because I just don't know how to control the distance. So what I have to do is eliminate anything that can go wrong. So up on the right, I can see some green. So I'm going to eliminate this bunker entirely out of my mind. And I'm going to hit this to the right of the hole, take the, take the two putt, get out of here. What can we do? And of course I go dead at it and I'm probably right next to the cup. This is important information to have. Check out the book by Tom Doak on course architecture to understand how a course architect sets up a hole, sets up a golf course so that you have to think your way and use the immutable laws of scoring that I'm showing you. Start line. Two putters outside the right. Now from 445, I don't really need to hit the driver here, but the hole looks so good. People tell you it's all statistical, it's data, it's on the paper. We don't play golf on paper or on computer screens, we play golf on grass and in the air and what we perceive. My perception here is this is a great hole for a driver. A lot of space on the right, so I'll rather err toward the middle of the fairway and push it to the right, but hopefully we hit it nice and straighter. And from 4.45, it should leave us a pretty short approach in. Easy game. Now, of course, my distance gives me the ability to play the back tees. If you're getting a lot of shots from 400 or 440, 450 yards on par fours, you may just be playing the wrong tees. There's no need to chase distance to play these tees. There's a lot of fun to be had between 6,000 and 6,500 yards. Probably the most fun. Believe that. There's one law I haven't spoken about, and it's the law of inside 100. I want you to get great at the game inside 100 so that you can hit the ball closer to the green with maximum confidentiality. You want to find yourself a 100-yard club, whatever it is, just find a club that goes 100 yards. Get to a fitter, he's going to give you a wedge, he's going to fit you into something that goes 100 yards. It's a really great thing to shoot a distance to a 100-yard marker and then hit the ball there and have a confidential 100-yard shot. 105, 95, 90, up to you. Use the nuance, use your brain. Then inside 100, you want a half a swing with all your wedges. If you've got three wedges, use those. Half a swing, 50%. Pitching wedge, 50%, 50 degree, 50%, 54, or 50%, 56 degree. Same swing, different lofts. Measure how far each club goes with the exact same swing. 
half a swing. I've shown that in a video, the link is in the description. Just use half a swing, you're gonna get three or four distances to pitch the ball with full confidentiality, so you can hit the ball close to the green to pitch it on. Come on players, partial pitch shots are difficult, but you can use one swing, multiple clubs, to become an ace. Okay, we're gonna hit, we're gonna hit 48 degree here from 130, 140 yards, because we'd straight downwind, and it's not gonna hold the green, with a 9-9, so we're gonna leave it short and let it run up, and downwind the ball curves much less, so I'm gonna hit a straighter shot here. Gay Ron Teed. Beautiful, beautiful. Confidential. This is absolutely in my... Hit well I. <laughs> what the hell, man? Where did that come from, girl? A bloody birdie. <laughs>